Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Actually Diet Art by Science, and today I'm going to do a demonstration making lace yarn. Now, in an earlier video, I talked a little bit about the fiber that I like to use for making lace yarn, um, and I tried to use my drop spindle to show you how I do uh, lace yarn with a drop spindle, but it was really, really difficult for me to get a good camera shot. As you can see, the lace yarn is quite thin, and in order to get a really good shot, I have to be very close to the camera. So, that wasn't going to work out, so I'm going to use my spinning wheel. This is my Kramsky Minstrel. And um, I have it currently set up with the lace bobbin side. Now, on Kramsky, the, and I think actually most bobbins for spinning wheels, the bobbin, this part right here where the yarn goes, there's two sides to the bobbin. There's usually a fat, a thicker side, it has a larger whorl, and on the other side, one that's smaller. And because this is a double drive wheel setup that I have, I have um, the band, the drive band goes around the bobbin, and it also goes around a separate whorl which attaches to the flyer. I have the larger one here. So the smaller one that I have is obviously smaller than this one. It's probably half this size. And that is attached to the, the flyer, this part that has the hooks. It's attached to that. And the drive band goes around here. Um, and then also on the, on the part of the bobbin. So that's how I have this one set up. Um, the fiber that I'm using is just some combed top, merino combed top, and I divided it into 12 pieces, and then what I did for um, fluffing it, I just, I just pulled the fiber apart like this, gently. I wanted, to I wanted to keep the fibers together, but I didn't want them to be too compact. So there's the fiber, and I'm all ready for the spinning. Now I wanted to offer a quick note about the way that I spin. I do kind of a reverse American forward short draw. Now this is what it should look like if I was doing that. So I have my drafting triangle here. You can see. Perhaps I should have chosen something other than pink. <laughs> But you can see how the point up here of the triangle is what leads into the yarn, and then the two points down here is what leads into the fiber supply. And what you do is you pinch with your forward hand and draw forward from the drafting triangle into the wheel. So, like this. So this, my right hand is basically holding the fiber fairly close actually and I'm drafting forward into the wheel like so this is how you do the American forward short draw and as you can see like my hands are <laughs> doing crazy things already because I don't normally spin this way but I said I do the reverse of that <laughs> But it's not exactly just a reverse of that. So I have the drafting triangle, but I hold my hand, my drafting hand, further away. So I have technically a very large drafting triangle, but I try to keep this fiber up here open and fluffy so that when I do my method, which is basically I roll the yarn between these three fingers kind of like this. And I feel the yarn that I've just made, and I try to draft out from this little area right here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's like looking at a mirror. <laughs> I don't know which hand or which direction my hand is going. So this little area right here, this is where my hand is, my, uh, these fingers are going to be working. And as you can see, it gets, it goes from being thin to being thick. So these fingers are kind of feeling that thickness and drafting out as necessary. 
and this hand is working in conjunction, or sorry, this hand is working in conjunction with this hand. This one is doing all of the fine tuning, um, getting the right thickness, and this hand is doing all of the backward drafting, and I'm controlling how much I'm drafting back based on what the needs are up here for the yarn. So I don't want to pull too much because I might get too little fiber caught here in the twist and then the yarn will be too thin. If I do it too slowly, I'm going to get a lot of built up twist over this thick spot. So I'm going to have a thick spot I will have to draft out later. So I'm just going to try to do this as slowly as I can to sort of show you what I'm talking about. But you can see me drafting backwards and sort of rolling the 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 yarn around. Now I have a little bit of twist in my fiber supply. You can kind of see right there where it's twisting. That's normal for me. This is this is just how I spin my yarn. I'm weird and that's okay. I make really good yarn and that's all that I really cares care about. So um, if you are also doing something a little bit weird then I say good for you. <laughs> Um, when I have reached basically my comfort zone, which is when I've, I've brought my hands all the way to my, my stomach or so, I will basically let the wheel pull the, the yarn on quickly. So I don't do a short, you know, quick onto the wheel type method short slow onto the wheel type method that you would do with the forward short 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 forward draw um, I do a very quick all at once when I have spun out or twist or like drafted out as much yarn as I'm comfortable manipulating at any one time so this is the weird way that I spin <laughs> All right, now lace yarn is kind of a challenge because you have a very small margin of error to work with here. Um, it's not forgiving if you want uh, a true lace yarn, which is something around 18 wraps per inch. You can't vary that too much, especially if you're going to be making um, like socks or lace items. Um, because the thick spots are really going to cover up those open lace holes if you have too many of them. So th making a very thin, very even lace yarn is going to be of a challenge. Also, it's going to take forever. <laughs> I just got done spinning about 500 yards of sock yarn. Um, I needed a heavy lace weight, so like I want to say 19 wraps per inch. I think it turned out to be 18, but I think it's like 19, 18, 19 wraps per inch I was going for. It took me probably 20 hours to spin up the single and about four, four hours or so just to ply it. Um, so yeah, it was, it was crazy, but the rewards are worth it if you have, if you have a little bit of patience. So if so the way that I do my spinning I use what I previously made how this piece of yarn feels in my hand I use that as the gauge for the next length of yarn that I make so what I'm doing is my fingers by touch alone are gauging how much fiber to let into this yarn so that I get a gauge that's pretty consistent and as you can see let me bring it up to the to the camera so you can see a little better Ooh. whoops All right. so you can see and I was actually talking the whole time right you can actually see how even this yarn is 
just by having it ply on itself. When you see a yarn plied on itself, uh, sometimes the um, fit, like thicker spots will become more apparent. Let's see if I can find one. The thicker spots will become more apparent when you ply it on itself because the yarn poofs up. And I actually did a pretty good job. There's a there's a slight thinning spot right here, so this is probably a little bit too thin for what I want. But the rest of it is actually pretty consistent, so I'm happy about that. Probably because my hands are used to making a bunch of lace yarn. <laughs> so I've been doing it practically nonstop for what seems like months. Um, so there's not a lot of margin of error here, so you have to be pretty diligent and always checking your yarn. But like I said, I I have this feel for the yarn when I do this weird little rolly method. If somebody actually knows the exact method I'm using and I just don't know, please let me know because I've been wondering this for years. I've even talked to other spinners who know a great deal more than me and they are they're just as confused about what to call it as I am. <laughs> so um, if you don't have a good feel for this, you're going to want to stop and check pretty often. So what you'll do is when you when you get started for your project, you're going to take a length of yarn, probably 12 to 18 inches, ply it on itself, and you're going to keep this by your wheel or by your drop spindle so that you can keep this gauge in mind. What it's going to do is tell you how thick it's going to be and how much twist you want it to have. You can have a lace yarn that has barely enough twist to ply and it'll be very soft and it will have a really nice halo. This would be good for um, like a mohair or angora. Or if you want something like, for example, I was going to make some socks with a, lace, a heavy lace weight yarn and um, I wanted it to have a lot of twists so that it didn't fall apart. So I, I made sure that the twist that I added was high enough so that it would basically endure being stepped on over and over and over. But if you if you if you um, do this, then you'll have a constant reminder of what your goal is. Or you can also buy one of these. This is a spinner's control card, and basically there's these numbers here in the middle, and then a corresponding black bar here. These numbers indicate wraps per inch. So if you hold your yarn up behind one of these, and I think this one should be about 28, and it is. So this is 28 wraps per inch, the single, which means when I apply it, it's going to be about 14 wraps per inch. And it is. 14 wraps per inch, which I know that isn't uh, lace weight yarn, but give me a break. <laughs> so basically, I just make sure that the fiber is fluffed up because the last thing that you want is a really dense feeling lace weight yarn. Make sure the fiber is fluffed up, that you have a sample or a spinner's gauge in mind or on, sorry, on hand, so that you can keep checking your yarn against um, your sample so that the whole skein will be the right size. When I first started uh, spinning uh, with my wheel, um, I didn't have a spinner's control guide, and um, I had only been using my drop spindle and just kind of making, just making yarn not plying it or doing anything else with it. So the gauge wasn't super critical. But when I started plying, what I noticed is the first bit of the yarn was a different gauge than the last bit of the yarn. And it got to be so severe that I would have a sport weight in the beginning and a worsted weight at the end. <laughs> so staying consistent throughout the entire skein of lace weight yarn that you're going to spin is kind of the one of the most daunting challenges outside of the fact that it's going to take you a while. So let me just do a little bit more here. 
oops, and there, there was a little fat spot. So what I'm going to do, if I were to leave this in, right, it would be too thick for the rest of my yarn. It would be slightly um, under plied because remember the, the Swiss likes to be in the areas of least resistance. And there's least resistance in thin spots because there are fewer fibers um, fighting the twist. So there's not going to be as much twist here. So it's going to be a fat piece when I apply it. And um, well, I can even show you. You can kind of see how that's going to be fat there at the bottom. So it's going to be fat at the bottom, or it's going to be a, a fat area in the ply. And um, if I'm doing something that has a lot of yarn overs, this is going to obstruct some of the view of the yarn over. So I want to get rid of it now while I'm still spinning um, because you can't really get rid of it later. And the way that I do it is I just f find the spot <clears throat> where uh, the, the fat part is and I'm going to untwist it and I'm pinch the twist away from it so that I can draft it out a little bit. And like so. I have gotten rid of that fat part that I didn't like and I'm going to add a few more twists so that um, the fat part has a little bit more twist because remember it didn't have as much because it was fat but now that it's skinny it can take more twist. And when you're joining a lace weight yarn, it's even more important that this area be thinned out considerably. A lumpy part will show up way more visibly than in um, a heavier gauge yarn. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just pinching a few of these fibers from the new supply and I'm going to add some twist and sort of draft the new fiber down just a teeny bit like so just to get that join to be very smooth and without any lumps okay and then once that happens I didn't, I didn't do so good this time, but if you're doing this and not talking with the camera like I am, this will be a lot easier for you. And this join will be impossible to see. So, I hope I was able to accurately demonstrate how to do a lace weight yarn with a spinning wheel. Like I said, it's just very difficult to really see what's going on because it's such a small, thin yarn. But I think you're, I think you're starting to see the point. It's going to take a long time. It's probably going to be a project that you come back to over and over because just sitting and spinning lace weight yarn, you can only do it for so many hours in the day before you want to rip your eyeballs out, at least I do. Um, but it's fun to do and I really like having some lightweight yarn on the wheel at least half the time. So, you know, I kind of go back and forth. I'll spin some faster stuff like worsted or sport weight yarn and then I'll come back and I'll do a lighter weight yarn like lace or um, a fingering weight yarn just because I don't know I think I think that it kind of gets me back to the roots um, of spinning because it's a little bit of a challenge it shows that I've dedicated a lot of time into making it and then you know if it's something that you've dyed you've added beads to you've knitted or crocheted it's really the epitome of the fruit of your labors so it's, it's very connected in that way. Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. Um, and as always, you can uh, follow me on Twitter and fan me on Facebook. And um, 
I plan to do a lot more videos in the future, but if you have suggestions, you can also send me an email or put those in the, in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.